All right, we're welcoming back Molly and Libby from Consignment Chats, catching up with Consignment Chats. They've been on the show. They were on way back in season one, episode, I wrote season one, episode one. So I don't remember which one. Yeah, that definitely wasn't the first one. <laughs> you must have been saying that because you thought we were number one. That's I don't true. know. <laughs> you, are, what it is. <laughs> you are amongst the favorites. That was an early favorite episode. We had a lot of fun. We laughed a lot. But yes, um, we did. Yes. welcome back real quick. So introduce yourselves so you can refresh our audience, please. All right. Um, Go ahead, Go ahead, Molly. <laughs> I'm Molly, and um, I am Libby's co-host and uh, with Consignment Chats, and I live in North Carolina. All right. A little intro. Yeah. Okay. I am Libby with co-host of Consignment Chats, and also I own Conchi Consignment, which is my everyday business, and Molly works with me there as well, and I'm located in the Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> so we are, people think we live next door, but we, we don't. We're uh, several states away. <laughs> Lily, that's what I thought. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we are several states apart. We used to live right down the couple of blocks from each other. Yeah. Uh -huh. right then, but uh, uh -huh. now we are many states away. Yeah, but, we're like uh, eight hours apart. Yep. And not that I've listening. timed it. Not that I've timed it. <laughs> How many but miles? You make it work. <laughs> Remotely and you make it work. There That's amazing. And I thought you were in the same room. Right? I feel like that sometimes. In fact, my husband feels that way sometimes. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. But you know, the scary thing is he and Libby are so much alike that I threaten DNA testing every day because <laughs> I... I have my work wife, literally, literally <laughs> and then my husband, and the two of them, I mean, they like the same foods, they dislike the same things, they have the same work <laughs> ethics. It's it's kind of scary. You choose well, <laughs> Molly. You choose well. That's all I, I can say. Maybe, or maybe I'm just glutton for punishment. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Obviously, I love it, right? Because I'm in it all uh, the time. I love it. Oh, Molly, Libby, you are, you're so funny. So now since we're talking about that, why don't you tell us, okay, let's get started with how did each of you got started into online reselling? Oh, Libby's got to start that one. Oh yeah. So <laughs> let's flip, let's flip it around a little bit because it has <laughs> a lot to do with how we met. Is that okay? Yeah. Of All course. right. Yes, it so, does. Yeah. So we met at uh, at our children's elementary school and we lived in this very economically diverse one square mile borough. And we got really involved in the school and we really wanted to bring something called, we invented, I guess, called sustainable fundraising to our school oh. to support local businesses and give all of the kids, regardless of what the economic status was, the opportunity to participate in fundraising. So we came up with this giant consignment sale and it really allowed everybody to participate. It allowed families to earn money. It gave back to the school. And it was just amazing to see all that in operation. And we just fell in love with consignment. We kind of fell in love with each other, you know. <laughs> Work life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. What an incredible. What about you, Molly? Please. So I, when I was, I guess really, Libby, you got me into it more than anything. I mean, the like online, you know, yeah. PTO, but then when you decided to open Conchi Consignment, um, she then reached out to me after her brick and mortar was opened because you, she had started selling online while waiting to get the brick and mortar together, just to start mm -hmm. getting some items up. Uh -huh. And, um, when she got in the brick and mortar, she was like, Ooh, I can't, you know, I hate to give up eBay what's going on over here because things are still happening, but I'm running a brick and mortar. So ring, ring, she called me and it just so happened. I was leaving a job getting ready. I was in a midlife, early midlife crisis, trying to figure out if I'm going to stay in early childhood or move on to something else. And she oh, said, Hey, you want to come be my internet sales manager and run my online aspects of the business? And I was like, um, 
I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I got in there and I, I still have such vivid memories, Libby, I'm sure you do too. Of I used to have a little desk in our back storage area at first. We just yep. kept growing into So at first I would go in the back room and I would just select a few high-end items, go back there, list them on eBay, and I would just part-time work. Then it grew to the day we hit a hundred listings and we were like, Oh my gosh, we have a hundred listings on eBay. You know, we were so excited. <laughs> so the next thing you know, my desk moves out next to the cash register <laughs> and I become the, I'm there 40 hours a week meeting our consigners face to face, sitting down with them, you know, talking about their items and Libby would work there at the register taking intake in and I would do the online aspect of it. And we just realized fairly quickly that we could easily work well together where one is weak, the other is strong. And so that's where our whole work relationship started. And that's when I started learning all about eBay and all about online consignment and all about the student became the master. So <laughs> then Molly's teaching me, she was like, she just took it and ran with it. And I'm like, Molly, how do you do this? And she's like, well, you taught me. I was like, not that much. <laughs> Not that much, Molly. <laughs> uh, well, we're kind of like, and now we're over 8,000 items in our store. So we're still wow. having parties wow. every milestone. We're just much bigger parties. But that 100, that first 100 is probably the most memorable. Yes. Thing what a milestone. Done. It's the yes. first big milestone that you never forget. Yep. yep. And yep. I knew Molly was going to be with me forever because I sell everything, right? I will sell anything. <laughs> and she came out of the back room. And I had sold her chair from underneath her at her desk. My and I was like, the fact that she is still with me and she stayed working with me. Yeah. All right. She can deal with me. We're good. Literally <laughs> sold so the chair from under me. <laughs> so Libby is pretty much, oh, this is legal. Okay. I'm selling it. Right. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I always That's tell right. her children to watch out. You know, I don't right. sell anything. So just be careful. Oh, what is it? You want to sell your kids on eBay? Don't be right. silly. You know, you made it your own. Sell it on Etsy. Right. <laughs> They're homemade. That's oh, I love right. that. I love that. <laughs> That's great. Sarah. That's great. I'm curious. <laughs> you say, okay, Conchi consignments. Where does Conchi comes from, please? It is the city we started in. It is that one square mile borough we were the talking borough. about where our kids went to school is Conchahawken. Um, and it's affectionately called Conchi. So neither one of oh. us are physically in that space anymore, but the, yeah. we had already gone so far down the branding road. Yeah. Um, we decided to stick with it and we still do a lot of business in the area except consignment support local charities we still have a lot yeah. of involvement in the community there so we're sticking with it and i think no. they like it yeah. yeah what a story you have behind that name i love this story because that's where you met yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it will forever be no matter where we are where we're selling it will forever be conchi consignment yep nice yep. Yeah. Even when she moves down here, it's still going to be Conchi consignment. All right. <laughs> Throw that out there. Come on down. <laughs> Libby, hint, hint. Uh -huh. yeah. So I'm curious. Okay. I've never done consignment. Uh, I've done it as a favor just to very selected friends. But mm -hmm. could you please elaborate for me and our incredible audience? What is consignment? And for those uh, of us that don't know or maybe are not very familiar as to doing it professionally like you do. You want me to get this, Molly? Like that one, All right, here we go. Basically, it's super complicated. There's a lot. No, all we do is sell <laughs> other people's stuff for a percentage. That's it. That's uh -huh. it. That's all we do. Um, it's not more complicated than that is we just sell other people's stuff and we get a percentage and they get a percentage and that's determined based on your business model. But that's as simple as it is. We sell other people's stuff. So let's say I have, okay, I'm just, I'm just playing, okay? Let's say I have 50 of these and of course I'm not an online seller. What do I do? How do I, how do I do this process with you? I've, I've you know, we go to your website and then what do you ask me or how does it work? Yeah. So basically it's on a case by case basis. We take consigners. Um, we kind of vet them a little bit, a little bit better than we did in the beginning. We've learned a lot. 
Um, yeah, and we would just ask you about your items, ask you if you were okay with the terms of consignment, like what the percentage is, how many days it is, all of those goodies. And if you were, you would send us the items or you would do a drop off at one of our locations. And that's that. We try wow. to keep it easy. I mean, our, ni our niche is really that we provide the service of sorting people's items, getting them uh -huh. to donation, um, researching them, doing all the behind the scenes work. Most people don't want to be bothered. They just want to just drop the items and know that we will take excellent care of them and yeah. do the best we can. And that's that's really what our niche is. But if I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I really want to, I want you to, to, you know, somehow I love your, your YouTube, your Instagram, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm excited. Would you, can I ship it to you or mm -hmm. do I have? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We have consigners. They box it up, weigh it. We send them a label and out to us it goes to whatever location is the closest. Yep. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. We do encourage people. I mean, mm -hmm. some people just really want to consign with us. So we do provide that service, but I really encourage people to, to do it locally, to do it locally. If they can find a consignment space that, wow. um, okay. that works for them locally. If not, we're happy, you know, we're happy to work with whoever. Yeah. And now with our new community of consignment chats, we have the ability to actually, we have so many people in our community from other locations that we can encourage those businesses as mm -hmm. oh options. so you have like a network mm -hmm. yep i, yeah. I would yeah. say that i would yeah. say that yeah wow you're almost like a franchise okay <laughs> Oh, Molly, should we franchise? Yeah. Yeah, I know. See, well, the lawyer well, on me, well, I can't well, help well. it. <laughs> Clara does a poll and I take something, I run with it, and next thing you know, Molly's going, wait, I, it was just an idea. I just did that I, I got to watch what, what I doing? say. Like, I literally have to watch what I say, especially have to be careful if we're having happy hour over the phone. <laughs> you know, the more beverages I have, the more things roll off my tongue. And then I wake up the next day and she's like, okay, you ready to get started? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. No, she's like, okay, Livy, you're like Amanda, okay? Yes. She's like, ay, that has like that military, like, go, go get it done, do or die, semper fi. You know, it's like, ah, oh, I'm sure. It's like, in hours, she's already, okay, done. What do we do next? And I'm like, oh. Uh -huh. I, love See, that. I'm very, I love that. I'm very, I have a very creative brain and things will just flow out of my mouth because they come creative. to my brain and I just say them. And my yeah. whole thought is you got to say them and then let's think about it for the next 24 to 48 hours. But we don't always do that 24 to 48 hours with Libby. Hey, we, we started a podcast and a YouTube channel and a whole community, yes, right? <laughs> yes, we did. There you go. Mm -hmm. So you've said it's easy, but the more we're talking about it, there's more, more steps to it. Always. It's and simple, you, but it's not easy. Simple, How's that? But it's not it's easy. simple, there we but go. it's not easy. That's a great way to put it, Libby. Yeah. But one of the things you said in our original interview, and you, I've heard you say a couple times since, is that all sellers should be prepared to consign. So what does that mean? Oh, yes. Oh. That's Libby's soapbox, and she's. I so don't. Yes. All right. I was gonna say, don't get me started, but heck, we're on your podcast. I'm gonna get started here, Molly. Right. Give me my soapbox, please. Here's your soapbox. Right. So even Clara said when we just started, I've sold things for other people casually. Yeah. Okay. Because when this first thing people usually say when you tell them you're a reseller or you sell things online is like. They are chasing you down like, oh, I have this. Can you sell this for me? Can you sell this for me? Can you sell that for me? And now you may be leaving money on the table. You may be passing up those amazing opportunities. And that really stinks, right? The other thing that can happen is you're not prepared and you don't give yourself enough percentage. Um, we, that's probably the most common one we see is I like you think you're doing somebody that. a favor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Me. And. Yeah. <laughs> and you're actually running a business. Um, so you can't be doing favors for people um, because you need to stay in business in order to support more people. Right. Yeah. OK. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that happens uh, when we get opportunities like that is we need the ability to say no. We need to know what we're passing on. So when you're consignment ready, if you're a reseller and you tell somebody and you're consignment ready, you're going to know what you accept, what your percentage is, and you're just going to take out that agreement and you're going to be like, hey, you know, does this work for you? If it doesn't, that's okay. That's okay. But you're not leaving money on the table. You're not doing anybody a favor and you're not accepting things that you really shouldn't be. 
That's so um, that's really why I so strongly believe that every cons- every reseller should be consignment ready. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I mean, I hope I don't trip getting off my soapbox. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Grab the railing. I've got a closet full of books that uh, will account to what you're saying. (laughs) My wife reminded me of the other day, you better sell Phillips books. I was like, okay. (laughs) So, can help you out with that. Yeah. (laughs) So, talking about your soapbox, Livy and Molly, also, I want to hear your feedback. So, what does a seller, okay? So, I did us a favor. I didn't set the percentage and the terms. Mm -hmm. I didn't manage the expectations, I think, Mm -hmm. correctly, right? And uh, what does a seller need to start? consigning or what are the basics that you would recommend to our audience please all right so the first thing i would do is i'd go to consignmentchats.com we have a sample consigner agreement there um, and kind of see the things that you should include in your agreement and oh, it's wow. not it, we call we don't call it a contract we call it an agreement uh mm-hmm. it's not written in legal terms it's written in everyday terms that anybody can understand uh nothing's worse than trying to explain a contract or have somebody sign 10 pages. We want people to understand what they're entering into. Um, So you need to know your percentage. You need, I mean, that's number one, the length of consignment, um, whether the items are going to be consigned for 60 days, what happens to them after the consignment period, whether they're transferred into your inventory or whether they're returned to the consigner or whether they're donated and uh, liability. a a short liability clause, like in the event of a catastrophic event, you know, these are your Uh, items. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. And you can have payout terms in there. I mean, you can get fancy, but literally it's, it's one page of, I think it's six six items that Mm -hmm. people can easily understand. You can fill in your own parameters and you can just have that ready to explain to somebody. Yeah. And the other thing people often when they first start consigning or they have that Uh consignment agreement, they feel hesitant to show it to people or hesitant to present it to people. Uh And um, Ashley from A&B Consignment, I have to give her a plug because she said something that really changed everything. She said, be proud of what you do and tell everyone. And what we do is we take that consignment contract and people are genuinely interested in what your terms are. Yeah. We are proud of what we do. We are proud of the money we are earning for you. There you Um, go. And we, we do it that we do it for friends. We do it for family. Everybody yeah. gets explained that consignment contract. Yeah. Or and agreement. Love, Sorry. <laughs> early on, I want to throw this out there because early yeah. on in our recording of the podcast, we were discussing this and Libby, we were using the term you get 40% or you get, and Libby made the statement then, and it was powerful. You don't get it. You earn it. If As a consignment not, seller. Yeah. 40 we're not get like you'll have a consigner come in and go, oh well, you get sixty percent. We earn sixty wow. percent. Yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. yeah huh. just change that one little word is yeah powerful. Yeah. You know when you're talking to them, you you get forty percent. We earn sixty yeah. percent. Anybody who resells knows it's not for the week. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of work. It's Heck, resellers are some of our favorite consigners. I mean, we yeah, get yeah. off from no. resellers all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the yeah. other thing is to make sure you have a tracking system of some sort in line yeah. before taking some. I mean, typically you do as a reseller, but especially when you're taking somebody else's items mm-hmm. into your space because you're now responsible for that. So um, if you use list perfectly, there you go. You can keep all your inventory right there. Huh. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But always make so you sure. Do, so you do use this perfectly for uh, managing your inventory uh, with your consignment uh, businesses? Well, so, go ahead. no, no, we don't. We use it a little differently than most people. Oh, so we yes. have a consigner. Um, we have a consignment software system. And recently we've just partnered with Consign Cloud. Okay. And that links into Shopify, which then gets us to list perfectly. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are really excited to be working with them. And they do some amazing things, okay. tracking consignments, store credit, wow. integrating with Shopify, um, uh-huh. and that sort of thing. So some people use, if you just have one or two consigners, you can do a spreadsheet, um, you know, keep it simple when you start. Yeah. And um, 
after that, I mean, consignment software is really just, we could never do the volume we do without having consignment software. We just yeah. couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And when you use this perfectly, where do you, okay, and, and your customers, are, I'm assuming, where do you tell them you're going to list or cross post your items, you know? So our cons where do we tell our consigners? Yeah, what channels do you use mainly? Okay, so we, do. or Molly, do you want to do this one? I can, I can. We really yeah, go ahead. focus eBay. eBay is yeah. our number one. It always has been. It's our baby. It's, we love it for so many reasons we have many episodes on ebay and why we love <laughs> ebay but you know one of the oh there's your ebay hat yes ma'am um you know one of them is i mean the worldwide audience that you get from ebay it's just it's it's a no-brainer for us and we always recommend new people coming in to reselling if you think you even want to go there, start with eBay first, because if you can master eBay, you can master anything. Yes. So <laughs> eBay is our number one. We do have accounts with other platforms like Poshmark and Macari and oh. Etsy. Um, but we really put the majority in our eBay. eBay. Everything goes on eBay. Yeah. Everything yeah. goes on eBay. Everything. Yeah. And then we, then we pick and pick and choose what we cross list from there. So we put it into list perfectly and then we can put it on posh. We can put it on, um, I, I do a lot of clearance on Facebook marketplace. It's one of my favorite, oh, nice. favorite, um, places yeah. to sell, um, for business building and bringing people to our Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so right. I know that's not a popular thing. A lot of people don't say Facebook Marketplace, but I am I am definitely a fan. Of yeah, but Facebook. I like how you're funneling from your Facebook Marketplace listings. You're taking it to your Facebook page. That's very smart. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Yeah, I, we did a video on that for uh, consignment chats. How really? to use? Uh, it's just a quick little video. How to use Facebook Marketplace uh, to build your to build your business? Yeah. And the so, other thing that we use List Perfectly for weekly without pause is our live sales. Oh yeah. Yeah. We funnel it through because we do it through eh. StreamYard. So we go through from eBay through uh -huh. this perfectly into Shopify. And then that's how we do that. So wait, 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 wait. So you go on StreamYard live. I did not know this one. Okay. On StreamYard. And then I'm guessing, are you casting to YouTube or, 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 or your website or what do you do? Where do you go? We go to Facebook. We do what we call resale therapy for country consignment oh, yeah. on Facebook. And uh, yeah, so our live sale is is there on Facebook. And then anybody can watch it after the fact, regardless of whether you're on Facebook or not. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's and then so we smart. go over to Instagram um, uh -huh. later on the same evening and we do like a consignment haul. It's called Insta Resale Therapy. And we just show all the, you know, new items that we're bringing in. So that's, that's really or an unbagging. unboxing, <laughs> unbagging, unboxing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we really have a lot of fun with live selling. It is a big part of our business. And uh, yeah, that's incredible. Awesome. Because much like you, um, I just want to mention, like much like you, our goal was was community oriented because coming yeah. from a storefront to all online. We had customers that wanted to connect and were just like desperate for that connection as we were as well. Yeah. We yeah. missed each other. <laughs> they missed us. We missed them. And Aww. they would come when we had a couch in the store, they would come and people, we would call it our therapy couch because people would sit on it and we'd be at the register. And be like, <laughs> is that so the we, inspiration for resale therapy name? Yeah. Yes. That yeah. is exactly where it came from. Oh, yeah, I love couch. that. Yeah. And it is BYOC, bring your own couch, because we're all <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it was interesting, a couple of weeks ago, I was, I was on one of your Insta Lives, Libby, and mm -hmm. it was, and I brought it up since and said that it was so fast, and you went through all the stuff, and then suddenly it was done. I was like, wow, that was really fast. Yeah. Efficient, yeah. but fast. Wow. That one is faster, because it's truly just an unboxing, we're just yeah. showing, we're not, we're not selling it's yeah if somebody comes in the comments and says i'm interested in that we will unless yeah. it's something we really have to research give them a quick low like vip you're here in the moment price okay. um but that it's really facebook is where it takes a little bit longer because we are scanning items and selling items and huh. describing and showing so it's different on facebook than it is on mm -hmm. instagram Oh, okay. So Instagram would be like a teaser, if you please. Yes, this is what's yeah. coming up in the store soon. 
And we always yeah. tell our, we have a lot of people that will come from Facebook and switch over to Instagram. We always say Facebook's our family friendly edition. Put the kids <laughs> to bed and meet us on Instagram because we can get a little wacko over on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> What you're gonna pull out of those boxes, and you don't, you, you know, really don't. You don't know. surprise. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, <laughs> Speaking about it, what's the most, would you say, challenging or weird item you have ever consigned or listed? Come on, Molly. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So. <laughs> When we were in the storefront and I was at my cute little desk that Libby sold the chair from under me at, um, <laughs> I had a, an adorable couple come in and they brought this container, this lidded okay. container, ceramic, I believe, wasn't it, Libby? Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. And they got it through family. They'd had it forever. They weren't quite sure what it was. And we're like, okay, it was well, gorgeous. Was, it was beautiful. And I'm like, gorgeous. I will research that. I will... It may take me a good, you know, 24 hours, but I will get back to you. I'm going to research this. And I started looking at this. We're like, everybody was like, oh, it's a, it's a biscuit jar, right? Like it's a biscuit. It's for biscuits. Okay. I'm like, oh, okay. Biscuits, biscuits. So I'm like, but I still feel like there's something more here. I get into researching it. We kind of put one out on social media for suggestions. Okay. Can you identify this? And as my research goes on and I get into the dark, dark <laughs> web, uh, it's a slop pot. <laughs> what? It was an antique slop pot, meaning they used it to clean the bed chambers from oh. the people to take the poo oh. outside. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. insert, insert crappy job joke right now. <laughs> but he was fancy. It, it said biscuits, thing. though. So. Uh, <laughs> A different kind of biscuit than we thought goes in that jar. All right. A totally different kind of biscuit than we thought. Oh, yeah. Ay, that's hilarious. Yeah. Never yeah. Know. For the couple, we were, they were adorable when we found out. They thought it was the greatest thing when we got the history on it and all. They thought it was wonderful. And then my other one I have is kind of a, I, that's kind of my funny, like really interested, really tough. Took me probably the longest to research. But I think probably the hardest for me. That was hard work-wise, but emotionally was, and Libby will remember this, the sweet little woman that came in with her doll collection. And I could not, not a single doll. And I mean, she was so proud of her collection. I know. And I had to look the sweet woman in the face and tell her that it had no value. And I literally, she's got tears in her eyes. Oh. And I, it was the hardest. I mean, I was like so upset that I made the sweet woman cry, but I couldn't, you know, it just, they had no resale value, but I did tell her, I said, you know, if you want to hold on to them, you know, you can donate them somewhere, but if you want to hold on to them and check back in a year, you know, these kind of collectibles ebb and flow next year, there could be a lot of value, but unfortunately right now there just isn't any, <laughs> but that was probably my most mm -hmm. heartbreaking was the sweet yeah. little woman that cried over the dolls. <laughs> you were honest though. Oh, I had to be, but it was hard. <laughs> I had to have a Beanie Babies conversation a few months ago. Somebody came to me and they're like, I got this garage full of Beanie Babies in package. Oh, I'm like, oh. And then they, the guy didn't believe me. So it's like, okay. Uh, I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> yeah. He didn't cry. Mm. But... He didn't cry. It's no. tough. Emotional value versus, yeah. you know, the real market value is so hard to explain to people that sometimes yeah. what you invested, you yeah. might not even get it 20 years later. <laughs> and sometimes you right. win the lotto. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have like a bunch of tips and tricks for dealing with those situations effectively. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 We definitely do that in our episodes because that is probably one of the most common things you run into is having, getting in like a little push and pull with consigners, even family members, right? Uh -huh. But it's not, but we do have tips and tricks to help you handle those situations and kind of smooth it over and take the blame That's off your shoulders. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> now, since we're talking about that, now I want to know what was your most challenging transaction so what? i'm just gonna use the spaghetti poodle example oh my gosh and the cake plate <laughs> and the cake plate so cake we had this 
you know, sometimes you just don't know the value of things. Like you just don't know. And at first glance, you can't really tell. Or even when you look something up. So we had this, what we thought was, oh, it was golden. No, it wasn't golden. It was white (laughs) ceramic, but it was a spaghetti (laughs) poodle. And oh my gosh, we had this thing on the special shelf where we Uh had our internet items. It was like white (laughs) shirt. Spaghetti poodle. All right, so we could spaghetti poodle. We couldn't sell this thing. I mean, we had it listed every we could not sell the spaghetti poodle. So probably like what a year later, it ends up like on the clearance rack. Nobody takes it. Nobody takes it. Nobody takes any spaghetti poodle. Nobody buys it at two dollars. Nobody buys the spaghetti. Little, it's two dollars. So, we month a month would do our charity events, and everything would be two dollars, and it would go toward um, whatever nonprofit we were working with for that month. Yeah. And the spaghetti poodle sat out on the sidewalk, sidewalk sale all day. Yeah. Came in. Um, our friend Polly finally took it home with her at the end because it was just left over. It, I mean, we couldn't even like practically give this thing away. And uh, <laughs> so we always say, oh, is this going to be a spaghetti poodle? You know? <laughs> Everything's and then we had a cake plate around the same time, this blue glass cake plate. And I think it sold on Etsy, didn't it, Molly? Yes, it sold on Etsy. Yeah. Beautiful. It was no beautiful. Glass. It went for... I mean, a couple hundred dollars. I, I yeah. can't remember what the price was, but right. that was something we did not expect to go as high as it did. So we're always like, we get something and we're like, is it a cake plate or is it a spaghetti poodle? I don't, <laughs> I and, don't know. And not every cookie jar is a slop pot. Yes. And not every cookie well, jar is a slop pot. <laughs> Be there careful with those antique cookie jars, okay? Yeah, you never <laughs> know. <laughs> Beware. So I do have to tell you that the spaghetti poodle did come back in a different form and it did make its its way. Um, I had an estate that I somebody had had me come work with them with and we got two enormous mm. actually it ended up only being one. I had to leave the other because it was broken. Enormous yeah. hand painted Italian ceramic spaghetti poodle. And when I was at the estate, I quietly took a picture and I sent it to Libby. And I'm like, you're never going to believe what's in this estate. <laughs> this spaghetti poodle. <laughs> but the other one was little. This was big. And I thought, you know what? I just got to take it. Like, I got to but I got to see what happens. And it sold really quickly for a good amount of money. So the spaghetti poodle did make a comeback. And it. it <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pro tip from Molly and Libby, get the big size of the spaghetti poodle. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Well, and I've got to add a question. What is a spaghetti poodle? So it is literally a ceramic tchotchke. It's just like a statue of a poodle. But what makes it spaghetti is the ears and the tail are just tiny pieces of glazed ceramic that they twist and make really tall, really tiny and curly for the tail and the ears. And it looks like little spaghetti. And so they call them spaghetti poodles. Oh, We've been talking about the spaghetti poodle for so long. I forgot that most people probably have no idea yeah, what we're talking about. Later, Doug, off camera, you can tell me what you thought a spaghetti poodle was. <laughs> yes. It's, it sounds scary. My in-laws have these, I have this weird, this weird thing. It Ever since I was a little kid, um, animal heads on people bodies freak me out. Yes. So and I don't know why. <laughs> but my in-laws have these ceramic, right. it's like a ceramic, it's been in the family forever, like a ceramic butler dog. And it's yes. like, he's like upright and he's got like a head and it's like, oh, yes. very, I don't like it. That's what <laughs> I was wondering that. about the spoodle poodle, the spoodle poodle, <laughs> the spaghetti poodle. Spoodle poodle. <laughs> that might be your spaghetti poodle. Maybe so. That might be your spaghetti like, poodle. <laughs> hopefully we don't inherit it, but. You know. might. You yeah. never know. Oh, I I'll love let it. You know. Now I know what a prank joke I'm going to be doing to Doug. Okay? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Clara. I, yes, 100%. The horse head? I don't know. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this it's is going to be fun. Nee, 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 nee. I have an idea for Vegas. All right. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'll run and scream. <laughs> People will be like, who's that woman screaming? <laughs> We'll have, um, the, we'll have the phone on record before we do it. Trust all right, me. Good. All right. So Libby and Molly, 
you obviously have an amazing rapport. You work together well. You almost have this interesting twin language. You finish each, finish each other's sentences. I almost said sandwiches, like from the movie, whatever that is. <laughs> so how do you work together as consignment chats? How does it work logistically? How do you divide it up? How does that all work out? So it really is just where our strengths are because when we started consignment chats we knew each other so well having known each other for 10 plus years and worked together from pto yeah. to con to kanchi consignment that we just already kind of knew whose strengths were what i mean libby is clearly i would tell her for years i need to be your manager i need to be your manager and get you out there because you have so much to share you have so much knowledge and you you have so much to offer in this industry. You just need, you need to feel it and get out there and do it. And I am not, now Libby was not that person. She did not. No, like I cried people. before our first live sale. Like I oh, literally had tears in my eyes because she I was, was so mess. like, she, no. she was an absolute mess. And I'm like, look, oh. people love, what's my soapbox? Authentic. That's, That's yeah. my soapbox. Here, wait, take it. Give me, give me the soapbox back. <laughs> yep. mine. You got to be authentic. That's when right. I have people say, oh, no. now there's authentic and knowing what business authentic is and what fun. I mean, you got to know using the right things in the right place, but be you. Yeah. And Libby has such a gift at, at just, I don't know, don't cry. <laughs> she just has a gift. She's got such a gift at telling people and teaching people in such a positive way. Oh, how God. to do this business. And mm -hmm. she's learned through life experience. She's not selling you something she hasn't walked. She's walked yeah. it all. And she's been in a brick and mortar. She's been online. She's done it all. And she's the kind of person who allowed me through working with her to learn myself through trial and error and not by telling me, do this, don't do that. And I think that's why we work so well together because I hate to be told what to do. Ask my husband. <laughs> <laughs> ask me. A I, I, I never directly ask Molly to do anything. <laughs> you, Jose, what do you think? What, what do you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> ask me a thousand times to clean a toilet, and I probably would do it for you. But the second you tell me to eat chewing gum, I'm not doing it. Like, don't tell me. <laughs> ask me, but don't tell me. Yeah, I mean, we just, we really just compliment each other. Like I, I always say I'm an underthinker and Molly's an overthinker and we meet in the middle yeah. and things get done. Um, yeah. She's very creative. I am on the other side of that. Like I can make a nice spreadsheet. Uh, I'm more <laughs> mathematical, strategic, and Molly is very creative. Like we just meet in the middle. But I think the most important part of our relationship is that yeah. We agree on our mission. We have a very strong mission so. for both of our businesses and we agree on it and we are both working toward that goal because even if we disagree on something, we can look at the bigger picture and say, all right, where is this taking us? What's the yeah. best thing for our mission? And we, yeah. we will both put aside whatever it is our thoughts are and focus on the mission and going forward. And I think that is really just. That's key. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is the mission for Kanshi Consignments, please? So Kanshi Consignment, the consignment business, is growing a community of circular conscious people. Uh, we are working to normalize secondhand shopping. We are cycling goods and money back into our community. And that is really what is important to our business. Yep. Oh, thank you. That's incredible. Yeah. Great answer, Libby. Now, <laughs> let's talk about, now you said, you know, you have your mission, you have a great team, you have chemistry with your business partner. Now, what, let's share with our audience, okay, what are the social media or community uh, venues or channels that you have built so people can reach and learn more from you? Yeah, so I think we should start with, so I'm going to put aside our business now, Conchi Consignment, um, and focus on consignment chats because okay. Conchi Consignment, that's our consignment business. And we felt, and I think a lot of um, people that do YouTube or out there as resellers kind of struggle with this a little bit, is mm -hmm. like, how do you separate your business from 
talking to other resellers, right? Is your business going to be talking to other resellers or is your audience customers? So Conchi Consignment, we have our customers, we have our consigners, but we needed to talk to other people and network with other people in the consignment and reselling community without using that. So we created consignment chats. Um, yeah. So Molly, do you want to say what our mission is there and how people can find us? No, because you're the mission statement guru. That <laughs> is, I think it is so important. <laughs> um, it is. Uh, so with consignment chats, what we're doing is we're building a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. So this nice. is all reseller focused. Um, mm -hmm. It is not necessarily consignment focused. We have huh? a lot of people that are just um, resellers, but we do encourage them to be consignment ready. We do okay. encourage that. Yeah. And you can find us. We have our main place. Well, of course, we have our YouTube and our podcast. Uh -huh. so those those are our two big channels. But if somebody's looking to find us and become a part of our community, we are on Instagram. But the best place to be an active part in a collaborative and supportive community is on Facebook. If you go to consignment okay. chats on Facebook and then you can ask to be in our private um, consignment chats community. And that's where we do a lot of the real support with each other. I think much like what List Perfectly does. I, that's one of the reasons we are so invested in List Perfectly and just it captured our our business, our hearts is because of the community. I mean, right. it's in both of our mission statements. I'm yeah. sure it's in yours. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't yeah. agree more. Yeah. And we will include all of your links so people can easily find you. Um, but let's dial in a little bit uh, to your YouTube channel. So what can sellers expect to find on the Consignment Chats YouTube? Libby, I, everything is what I'm going to say, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> everything, including the kitchen sink. Um, yeah, uh, we have a lot of educational content. I mean, I think that is the primary focus of our of our channel is to educate people on consignment, reselling, how to improve their business process. Uh, so uh, little tips and tricks that might you hadn't thought of, things like that. Um, but one of our favorite things to do is yeah. shine the C chat spotlight on other resellers. And that is really just amazing to get to meet with so many people and see what they're up to. And oh, and see it with C chat, oh, with which has been our biggest oh. the thing people are most interested in is uh -huh. how other sellers run their business. Like what yeah. are all those all those parts and pieces and what does it actually look like? Uh, yeah. So we've been highlighting different businesses in our See It with Sea Chats episode, and you can get a behind the scenes look at how a business is actually run day to day and what tools they use, how their inventory is stored, all of that amazing stuff. Incredible. Yeah. Awesome. And the other thing that we added in the last year, roundtables. So yeah. we will do once every couple of months a roundtable with other resellers if there's been a hot yeah. topic in the community. We'll do an episode that we invite them in and give everybody a chance to share their struggle or words of advice around yeah. that their topic, be it shipping or listing or cross whatever. Live sales. Live sales is a hot topic. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We'll get into that. But before we get into that, what can our reseller community and audience find in your podcast channel? So a lot of the same, a lot of the same things. We do um, turn most of our YouTubes into podcasts. Um, okay. The quick chats, the quick help. You know, how do I list something tutorials. on Instagram uh, from eBay? Yeah, the short tutorials can only be found on YouTube. Um, okay. There is actually a one of the quick ones I did on. Uh, podcast as well as YouTube, the quick one was um, going through an actual consignment contract, how you would present that to someone. And that has been, I think, helpful to the community or helpful wow. to a reseller that just wants to have that contract, have that agreement in their pocket. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Now, I love adding the term palooza onto things. And so <laughs> I've been wait. you haven't mentioned this yet. And I see these pop up and I was like, should I do one? So tell us about the list yes. of paloozas. You <laughs> do one. Oh my goodness. So 
The Listapaloozas <laughs> came about, what, about a year ago because- It's Molly's Listapalooza. Molly oh, runs this baby. Right. It's her baby. Yeah. So I came up with this idea because my husband, who's uber supportive of what I do and loves oh. it, sometimes a little too, so no, I'm just kidding. He loves to get <laughs> come to the Facebook lives. You'll see him in the chair behind me. He's all in. He's part of our mm -hmm. Facebook lives. He's, he just loves everything that I, that Libby and I do with this business. He's very supportive. So yeah. one weekend we got into a lot of photography and in one of our episodes, I think it was, I said, we had a photo palooza this weekend. We were photographing like crazy. And from that, my creative brain that I tell you about when said, you know what? we should do a list of Palooza, like a challenge where we get all of them together. Everybody comes together in our community and we pick. And so that's kind of where it came from. And we did our first one. We had prizes and it just, people loved it and they just keep asking for it. So this summer, because Libby and I are true believers after being in this industry for 10 years, that there is a summer slowdown that we decided, wouldn't it be fun to counteract the summer slowdown? Because we always say when we start to get depressed in the summer, when the sales start slowing down, we remind each other, Q4 is going to be here before you know it. So just as Teresa Cox would say, shut up and list. <laughs> this is your time to list. And so I thought, wouldn't it be great for us to do list of Palooza's many times in the summer. So we decided yeah. let's do, I think it was you Libby that named it a list of Palooza festival festival. It's a festival. Yes. I I love it. <laughs> so we are having a list of Palooza summer festival. So each month we are having a three day list of Palooza. Yeah. So we are today is actually, as we record this, our final day of the July list of Palooza and there'll oh. be one in August. And then we'll go back to having one every couple of months but everybody loves it it's such a positive Libby loves when I use the term kumbaya moment I mean it really <laughs> is, I we do get teary-eyed in the community because we make an event for it and everybody is really in there patting each other on the back lifting each other up posting yeah. these inspirational posts with and somebody will come in and say well I only got one done or and I think I said today if you say the word only before your number of listings moving <laughs> To get deducted points. <laughs> <laughs> the one rule is you can't say I only. I only, oh, I only listed. You listed one. If you listed one, guess what? You listed one. That's <laughs> awesome. So and we had somebody last time, it was her first ever time listing and listing on eBay. And she had her first sale that Monday. We did it over the weekend and she had her first sale on Monday. And it was just I'm like so excited. Yeah. That's big. Yeah the best. So that's our list of Palooza's. So in order to be a part of that, I, I yeah. always encourage people, we try to do it. We do it on Instagram too, but it really is much easier in the event group on Facebook. I think people feel a bigger part of the community if they're in that, because that's where a lot of people do the, the supporting each other and lifting each other up and yeah. not, you don't get that on Instagram, but we do, yeah. you know, there are in people on Instagram that do participate, but okay. Okay. That's the best place to participate. <laughs> I'm asking about Molly's list of Palooza. I, I just want an excuse to put my head on a sketch body in an image. <laughs> 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 just for you, Doug. If All right. Head, Thank maybe you. I should put my head on an animal body and reverse it. <laughs> <the world. laughs> I love it. So <laughs> earlier we briefly talked about that you were using a dedicated consignment software, but I know you're using more. You're using List Perfect. Would you mind sharing with our audience um, the tools or the software that you're using in order to accomplish okay, your day-to-day -day business operations? Yeah, sure. We are in the middle of uh, converting to Consign Cloud. We are thrilled to be working with them. So that is where everything gets entered. Uh, and then it automatically is in Shopify. It's it's integrated mm -hmm. with Shopify, which is amazing. Okay. And then things can go to um, to list perfectly. And then we can put them wherever else we want, depending on what the item is. Like I said, everything gets listed on eBay. So um, yeah. we'll use that to go to eBay. We'll use that to go to 
Poshmark, if we decide to start listing there again, we do have, a, we've been on Poshmark since the beginning, like since <laughs> the beginning of Poshmark. Wow. Um, yeah. So if we decide to start listing there again, we'll go there, Macari. We've always had um, a wavy relationship with Poshmark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's to put it mildly. <laughs> and Facebook Marketplace. So really, um, List Perfectly is disseminating all of those, um, yeah, as to all of those marketplaces. And what we like to what we like to do is make sure, and List Perfectly allows us to do this, is we are not confusing our customers because I think that a lot of people have the uh, you know, uh, this is listed on Poshmark, this is listed on Mercari, this is, you know, and they sent and the customers get very frustrated. Um, so we have everything on eBay, they can always shop eBay and be sure they're getting our most current inventory. And that is how we advertise that is what is linked to our website. It's very um, easy for customers to find what they're looking for. So we don't advertise that we sell other places, we don't really Okay. But we do sell a lot. We do sell a lot of other places, but that is what, that is what we push to our customers just to keep things clear, easy. Simple. Yeah. And simple and simple. Yeah. And so you touched on this earlier, live selling. So how's that going and where are you currently selling live? Oh, it's going fantastic. Right. Really? We yeah. love it. Wow. We love it. We're over a year anniversary on our resale therapy live. Mm -hmm. right? oh, wow. Congrats. Congratulations. Awesome. You. I know. What did your daughter say to you last week? Yeah. So we've been doing this. We do it every Thursday night. My daughter said to me, she's like, yeah. I don't even remember a time when you didn't do this. Like it is just such a part of our life. Oh, that's and a I was like, yeah, it's like the week, the week begins and ends with resale therapy, right? Everything leads up to it. And then everything. And then we so have funny. resale therapy hangover. Yeah, it's real. It's real. It's real. Yes. But it's yes. just so beautiful to be able to connect with our community in that way. Like yeah. our goal with it never was uh, to have sales. I mean, sales are a nice byproduct, but our, yeah. our goal was really to, to connect with our community and interact and kind of, you know, let them chat with us and let us chat with them. So yeah. Um, and show them new products that are coming in, give them the special deal because they are a part of our community and kind of yeah. just really embrace that whole circularity of supporting nonprofits and yeah. uh, connecting people. So it's 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 been wonderful. It's it was online. slow. It was slow to grow. Right. But we said we were going to stick yeah. with it. We mm -hmm. were going to stick with it because we believed in it. Um, yeah. And yeah. And it's paid off. It's our paid thing off. was, you know, we had to bring our therapy couch back, right? So there are, sometimes we get our sales go so long. So we're on Facebook every Thursday night at 7 Eastern. Okay. Eastern. And that has grown so much that sometimes, and then we go 8 p.m. over to Instagram, but sometimes we're like, oh my gosh, we got to get through these items because <laughs> we get so into talking to everybody because they're yeah. in the comments. And it's just such a wonderful thing to, they now have relationships with each other and inside like little jokes with each other over time that have grown and they've never met face to face, our, yeah. our Kachi family. And yeah. it's such a wonderful thing. There's so many inside jokes. We do have a drinking game. We play every Thursday night with, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we do contests, we do a giveaway and it's just it's, I mean, they're there when the chips are down, somebody's mother's not well, everybody's there supporting them. Yeah. And it's just, it's become a real community. That's amazing. That's cool. That's cool. Now, so, we well, talked earlier. Oh, sorry. When is there going to be a Conchi Fest? Uh -huh. Conchi Fest. Conchi Palooza. A Conchi Palooza. <laughs> we never even thought about that, have we? Doug, we did like a live selling marathon or something. Oh my gosh, Doug! Oh my gosh, Doug! <laughs> Sponsored by List Perfectly <laughs> and the Seller Community Podcast. <laughs> that would be so fun. That would be yeah. so fun. All right, Molly, yeah. I'll keep I'll keep a lid on it at least for a couple. Maybe of weeks, let's I do promise. Let's, let's, <laughs> I, look at Molly. Okay, for those of you listeners, Molly's like, oh no. <laughs> what are you gonna wake up tomorrow? <laughs> I'm gonna wake up tomorrow to a list of all the stuff we're gonna do for a Palooza. Ducky, 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 ducky. Claire and I will come. 
All right. I You'll never even thought that. about it. This is opening up a whole new world to me. Oh my gosh. Y'all are right now just witnessing how the <laughs> eyes light up and the little sparks start coming out of her hair. I mean, you're seeing <laughs> it live right now. Happening. Thanks, thanks Clara and Doug. Parent physical event with a virtual one. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh Lord, Lord, Lord. Hi. Well, we were talking a little earlier about the incredible tools you use to grow your business. And of course, you know, uh, this is for the Seller Community Podcast, but we're sponsored by List Perfectly. Yeah. I have to say, how did you discover List Perfectly, please? That's oh, Libby. She was the discoverer. I, you, I don't know. How long have we been using it? Two, three years? How long has List Perfectly been around? Three years. Three years. So we've probably been using about two, two and a half years. Um, because I was at a seller meetup and I was, I was at that point cross posting everything manually, like literally Ooh. taking screenshots on my phone oh, no. and I was cross. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Poshmark. Yeah. It was, it was. You didn't rough. know. You didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Really you young, okay. You can still do it. Okay. <laughs> still After time. 40, you're like, no. And myself and another reseller were just chatting and I was like, there has to be a better way than this. And she's like, yeah, there, there has to be. And so I went home and I started researching and I found this perfectly and I hopped right into the community and, or the pay, maybe it was on the, pay, no, I think it was the community. I hopped okay. right in and I just saw all the support and how dedicated you guys were. And I was like, yeah, I'm in, this is a business that I really want to deal with. And um, just, it was that community, that community. I didn't look any further once I found you guys because I just knew that you would be there to support. And that's the most that's important everything. thing. That's everything. That's, that's everything. everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And no more manual cross posting. <laughs> <laughs> you can see because if I was actually doing at a seller meetup, I was spending hours a day, hours a day. Like I was like, all right, the speaker's done. Let me just squeeze a couple did, listings in here i'm yeah. curious Libby, did you did you list it natively on ebay with a uh, turbo lister or no. Was it, no oh okay. no mm -mm. no you still have it easy okay with a new lister okay back in the day there was something a nightmare called turbo lister okay i remember um, i've never used it never used oh. it <laughs> yeah oh me I've heard the rumors, the Turbo Lister rumors back from back in the day. Turkey Lister? Turkey Lister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would hear people talk about it. I'm like, why is everybody making this like more complicated than it is? And I've been selling on eBay for 20 plus years. Like I'm not, yeah. I'm not new to the game. Yeah. Right. Um, I was like, people, I, I think it's just making it more complicated than it is. Like in all yeah. honesty, like just put your item up, just list it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So how has List Perfectly changed your business? Um, time. Time. Time saver. And as Libby has said, since the day I started working in the store with eBay listings as her internet sales manager, she would say to me, the least amount of times you can touch an item, the more money you make off of it. Time. And List Perfectly yeah. saves so much time. And That's time right. is money. Time is money. So, yeah, it's as that's simple as that. <laughs> that's the biggest. That is so true. That is so true. This is a question that I like to ask. And sometimes we use it in titles, sometimes we don't. But I'm particularly interested in what each of you would say to giving us three adjective that, adjectives that describe you and consignment chats. That describe ourselves? Oh, you? I was just going to describe consignment chats. Well, or your team. What about your team? You there as you a go. team. You as a team. That's a good one. Uh, well, I've got three. Okay. And I might be taking one of yours, Libby. Well, let's do three together because two of them are in our mission statement. It's Collaborative. Yes. Oh, yeah. Supportive. Oh. Okay. And, of course, my favorite. Fun. Fun, fun, go. fun. You gotta have fun. If you're not having fun, walk away. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, if people walk in sometimes when I'm working, I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm working. Well, you look so happy. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm having fun. I'm sorry. Am I not supposed to enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> or Molly and I will be chatting about work and we just we just go on like we're just having right. a ball. Yeah. And I want to say consignment chats is resourceful, too. There you go. Because we are we really have a ton of resources for resellers and yeah. and consignment sellers. And we are there to provide that. Yeah. Yeah. All Good right. Stuff. This is, I would like, this is a very important question that I would like to make sure. This is your chance to say anything you would like to add to our community. Maybe you already said it or we didn't ask anything you wish. We love you. <laughs> we love you too. Yes. I, I just, I personally just want to thank you guys for putting together the community and showing and doing things in the way that you did with building List Perfectly and building that community and really highlighting different sellers and the ways they use List Perfectly, but the way, you know, the ways to be in the community, the ways to sell and just really building the way you built List Perfectly is absolutely, I believe, an inspiration to so many businesses. And I just really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing things the way you did, because it is an inspiration to me, to consignment chats. Um, and wow. I just thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. The tears. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> true. Think, there's no <laughs> crying in consignment. <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of crying in consignment. No crying in <laughs> Only over dolls. <laughs> oh, spaghetti ponies. <laughs> Puppies. Poodles. <laughs> Spaghetti puppy. <laughs> oh, thank you, Libby. Thank you, Molly. It means a lot, okay? Your words and your support. And thank you for, um, you know, we're still a small business compared to Shopify, eBay. We're a small business. So thank you for supporting Liz Perfectly, which is a small business. And uh, I'm really touched by your beautiful words and uh, for always believing in us and putting your business, trusting your business with our solution. Oh, you might be a small business, but you're making a big impact. Thank, Thank you. Impact. Thank you. Big Thank heart, you so much. Small business, big heart. It's all That's heart. right. Yeah. That's right. That's true. Yeah. Oh, so many kumbaya moments. Yeah. <laughs> well, and thanks, Livy and Molly, for what you do in the community as well. I mean, you've got a huge community, you've got a huge niche, and you're very helpful and you're always out there. So, yeah, we appreciate that as well. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to say before we started consign, like I felt like part of me was missing. Like there was something else I was supposed to do. And mm -hmm. when I started, when we started the community, it was really like, that's the piece. That's the piece. Interacting, yeah. um, helping other people get a leg up in the business. Really. Go. Oh, it just completed me. It absolutely mm -hmm. completed me. And it just I found it's, my mission. Isn't it so rewarding <laughs> that you become like addicted to it, you know, to help other people and make sure they're being successful. And then they're successful. You're successful. And it's just, it's, it's just it's, good. It's good karma all the way around. It really is. It really is. I think yeah. our consignment chats and list perfectly are very much alike in what you believe in. And of course we laugh because <laughs> a lot of times our episodes are back to back with the same people. <laughs> oh, and that's happened so many times. Do you uh -huh. know you guys were just doing Stuart? We were just we just interviewed him. Oh, yeah. oh I and love like two it. days late and two days later the episode with you guys came out. Now you'd obviously probably recorded yours before ours, but it was just so funny. I'm like, oh my God, yeah, what happened too. again, Molly? Did you see this week's <laughs> Seller Community Podcast? <laughs> Like we're not copying. We just all have the thing. We just we're so much alike and we love the same amazing people. Yeah. Exactly. We laugh every time. We're like, oh, oh great minds. That great minds thinks alike thing. That's right. You that's right. What a beautiful session this has been. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Libby. Thank you, Molly. And uh, thank you for sharing so much uh, wisdom and tips with our audience. We can't wait to have you back. Oh, thank well, thank you. you, Doug and Claire, for having us. We yeah. will be seeing you on consignment chats real soon. That's yes, right. You got it. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Third time will be a charm. Absolutely. <laughs>